All right. Good afternoon. Uh, today is the International Day of the World's Indigenous Peoples. The Deputy Secretary General Mina Mohammed said this is an opportunity to acknowledge the diversity and wealth and, uh, that Indigenous peoples possess and to recognize the richness they bring to humankind. In her opening remarks at an event held by DESA here in New York, she said that Indigenous women and men are advocating for sustainable livelihoods from one generation to the other, defending biodiversity and the integrity of ecosystems, and raising alarm over the growing impacts and disruption from climate change. She also stressed that almost half of the world's estimated 6,700 languages are in danger of disappearing. Most of these belong to Indigenous peoples. With every language that disappears, the world loses a wealth of tradition, knowledge, and cultural heritage, she said. Her full remarks are online. <clears throat> and in a message delivered today to the Nagasaki Annual Peace Ceremony, the Secretary General paid tribute to the victims and survivors of the nuclear bombing of that city that took place on this date in 1945. In the message, he said he was profoundly moved when he took part in the ceremony last year, noting that the testimony of the Hibakusha touched his heart, along with their devotion to ensuring that the great tragedy that befell Nagasaki is never visited upon any other. The Secretary General pointed out that the nuclear danger persists, calling it on international community to join forces to safeguard the security benefits that existing treaties bring, us, bring to all of us. He stressed that the only true guarantee against the use of nuclear weapon is their total elimination. This remains the United Nations and the Secretary General's highest disarmament priority. The message was delivered by Izumi Nakamitsu, the High Representative for Disarmament Affairs. And some positive developments from Yemen. Our friends of the World Food Program today welcomed what it called an important and positive steps taken by the Sana-based authorities on safeguards to ensure humanitarian food assistance reaches the most vulnerable children, women, and men in areas of Yemen under their control. A document signed, um, sorry, WFP said it will resume food distribution following the Eid al Adha festival for the 850,000 people in Sana City who have not received food rations from WFP for the last two months. WFP is also beginning to roll out of a smart car driven beneficiary management system that will register 9 million people in areas of Yemen controlled by the Sana based authorities. These vital measures provide for the protection and privacy of the people WFP serves and the independence of humanitarian operations. And today, the Greek Cypriot leader, uh, Nikos Anastasiades, and the Turkish Cypriot leader, Mustafa Akinci, met under the auspices of the Special Representative and Deputy Special Advisor of the Secretary General on Cyprus, Elizabeth Spehar. According to the UN mission, um, UNFASIP, the two leaders had a sincere and constructive exchange of views and decided to continue engaging in their efforts undertaken by the UN Special Envoy on the Cyprus dispute, Jane Hole Lut, to finalize the terms of reference that would enable structured and results oriented negotiations. The two leaders also announced their readiness to hold a tripartite meeting with the Secretary General after the General Assembly in order to plan the way forward. More information online. And earlier this morning, the World Health Organization provided an update on the Ebola outbreak in North Kivu and Ituri provinces in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. According to WHO, the virus transmission continued this week with similar intensity to recent weeks, with an average of 86 cases per week. There are currently no confirmed cases outside of the DRC, and uh, in the last 21 in the 21 days from August, from 17 July to August 6, a total of 257 confirmed cases were reported, with the majority coming from the health zones of Beni and Mandima. No new confirmed cases have been reported in Goma City since the last report, with a total of four confirmed cases. And UNHCR said today that as of Wednesday, more than 500,000 Rohingya refugees from Myanmar who are currently in uh, Cox's Bazaar in Bangladesh, have been registered in a joint effort between the agency and the Bangladeshi authorities. For many of these refugees, this is the first time they have an identity card. The registration will help ensure the accuracy of data on refugees in Bangladesh, 
giving national authorities and aid agencies a better understanding of the population and their needs. It will also help humanitarian organizations plan their programs and target assistance where it is most needed. Um, and just a note to remind you that on Monday is an official uh, UN holiday in observance of Eid al-Adha. Uh, UN headquarters will be closed, but will be available as we usually are online and by, uh, email and by phone. And on from Tuesday to Friday next week, uh, my office will not hold uh, daily noon briefings, but I understand Monica will be here. Um, we will, we, the office will be staffed and we'll be able to answer your questions. We'll be posting highlights uh, on the web. Um, and also I want to remind you, uh, mind you, and especially for you to remind all of your colleagues who come in during the General Assembly that the deadline to apply for media accreditations for the high-level week is September 2nd. Uh, so please tell your colleagues to apply now and not wait till the 1st of September or not wait till the 3rd of September, but to do it bef way before the 2nd. And lastly, I wanted to bid a farewell to one of uh, the most beloved uh, people among the press corps, Widad Franco, after nearly 15 years of working with NHK here. She is seeking her fortunes elsewhere. I think on behalf of all of us in my office, uh, we've all long admired and appreciated her hard work and dedication, not to mention the extreme patience she has shown to all of us. Uh, we wish her a lot of good things for the next step of her life. Edie. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Steph and uh, many of us here definitely uh, echo what you said about we did. We will miss her too. Um, does the Secretary General have any comment on this humanitarian rescue ship that's now been eight days in the Mediterranean with no country in Europe willing to take the 121 migrants on board? Uh, I mean, this is an issue that uh, our colleagues at IOM and UNHCR have been leading on, but I can tell you that I have no doubt the Secretary General would want to see uh, a country uh, living up to, its, uh, to their obligations um, and showing solidarity with those on board. I think the longer people stay at sea, the greater risk they have in terms of health, uh, and it is important that uh, these people be their dignity be uh, be respected. Yes, sir. Uh, follow up. Uh, following the passing of the law in Italy that for any boats to help uh, uh, refugees at sea uh, will be fined up to 1 million euros, uh, which of course will be uh, extremely prohibitive for small fishing boats that they might see people in distress even, and this is quite contradictory with international law of the seas. Uh, what is the situation? From the UN uh, position, and uh, are they just uh, observing the situation? No, I think you, I, I would refer you to what UNHCR has been saying for the uh, for the past a few days and, and longer on this, uh, and they speak uh, for the UN on terms of refugee issues. Masuji, thank you, Stefan. Stefan, uh, following Secretary General's statement of peace and calm and talks. The thing is, both the countries have broke up diplomatic relations with each other. They are now on the verge of, I mean, you know, cursing each other. And it seems that they are all, and, and you, you know more than anything, and they are trigger happy at this point in time. So what is it that the Secretary General can do? Has the Secretary General decided that he will talk to the, uh, both the leaders of India and Pakistan? And I know that he's on vacation. But he, can he come out from his vacation and the, talk to these? Uh, first of all, the S Secretary General has been uh, kept informed, uh, very much informed of what is uh, of what is going on and what the contacts uh, that the UN has had uh, via the permanent missions, uh, both from uh, the Indian permanent mission and the uh, permanent mission of Pakistan. I think our statement yesterday uh, was quite clear. Uh, and extensive, and that continues to be our position. But you, you are noting the deterioration of diplomatic relations. There are no links. The channels are being closed. Any channels or talking being closed. 
So how is the Secretary General going to communicate with these leaders? As, as I just said, contacts have been had with the permanent missions from both countries. Okay. If the car, and then we'll move on. Yeah, just to follow up on this. Uh, has any progress been made, been made in, in the context? In your your microphone, sir, please. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Has any progress been made in the context the UN is having with the permanent missions of Pakistan and India, at least towards easing the situation in Indian occupied uh, Kashmir? I can't, uh, say, I, I can't say I have any updates to bring to you on that uh, on on that front, okay. Madam. Thank you. Uh, as you mentioned, the upcoming ANGA, it reminded me of the amount of journalists we will have here. And uh, do I already have an exact idea where, where they will be placed this year? Uh, my understanding is that discussions are being, uh, not to use the same language we use for every crisis, but discussions are being had between our colleagues in the Department of Global Communications and uh, ANCA uh, to find the appropriate solution. Which are the options? Uh, I, it's, not something I, it's not something I'm involved in, but I think they're looking at different uh, locations that, that will hopefully work. Do you think it includes, uh, the options uh, include this uh, bunker thing? No, I don't, think, uh, I don't think anybody wants to send you three floors underground. Okay. okay. Uh, yes, sir, in the back. Thank you. Um, so the U.S. ambassador to, to Berlin today uh, doubled down on the threat of the U.S. to relocate thousands of troops to Poland, possibly from Germany. Um, this is seen as a move which might provoke Russia. I just wonder if the Secretary General has a stance on that. No, I mean, I haven't seen the comments made by the, by the ambassador, but so I, let me look into it. But I don't have a comment at this point. Yes, sir. question regarding the new U.S. ambassador to the U.N., Kelly Kraft. Mm -hmm. Has the Secretary General issued a statement on her welcoming her, and will he meet with her because it's been vacant for eight months, this particular yes. important position? Uh, first of all, we're, we're uh, Secretary General very much looks forward uh, to meeting with Ms. Kraft, uh, to welcoming her here, and obviously, most importantly, to work very, very closely with her on the very important uh, relationship between the United States and the United Nations. Uh, and I mean, I think he's, he's excited and looks forward to, to working with her and, and having the same sort of positive and productive relationship he's had with her, her predecessor. Uh, we are waiting to set a date for the presentation of credentials, which is the first official uh, step, which uh, will happen, uh, I have no doubt, uh, well before the General Assembly gets underway. That was it? OK. <laughs> Preemptive answers, that's what I try to do. Yes, sir. Go ahead, Masood. Thank you. Uh, so, so have, as, have you noticed the change in, in, in Kashmir? All the uh, in leadership of the Kashmiris have been arrested, incarcerated, or in jail. And Indian army has been increased from 500,000, another 25,000 army troops being there. So is there anything that is left to repress the Kashmiris? So, where is where does the secretary general where does the secretary general begin to talk to? Well, I mean, I, listen. I, I think uh, I I would encourage you to reread the statement which we put out uh, yesterday, which very much addresses our concern about the situation inside Kashmir. Yes, we we do. I know, but the thing is, but that is all uh, the talk. What is going to happen in in real sense? I mean, the, yeah, I mean. We all want talk and peace and everything else, but this is not happening. Listen, the, what, what we are saying publicly is also being transmitted uh, privately uh, through the permanent missions to both India and Pakistan. Yes, madam. Welcome back. I haven't seen you in a while. So the Secretary General was instrumental in decriminalizing drugs when he was Prime Minister of Portugal. I wonder if he's made that framework available to any of the other member states or if any other member states have inquired about that model? 
Uh, I don't know if they've inquired about that model, but they should inquire, if they're curious, they should also inquire with the government, uh, the present government of, of Portugal, I would assume. But I, I, don't, I, I don't have any information to answer your question in a substantive manner. Monica Grayley, up to you. <laughs>